Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Elementary OS 6.1. This was just released and we're just going to go ahead and talk about it, take a few steps through it, see what it's like, how is it for using as a general purpose operating system. And without further ado, let's dive right in. So a few words about Elementary OS before we begin. Elementary OS is a very polished operating system that is based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, but then it comes with a modern kernel so that you get some of the benefits that come with the modern kernel. We're going to go through it. So the applications menu is basically your start menu. You can change the look by clicking on these icons. This is a categorical look, but I prefer this and this is the default. So you have your applications. As you can see, we don't have a ton of these. As of today, as you'll need was released, I would also talk about some of the updates and some of the changes that the team has made to elementary OS. And hopefully things will make sense in this video. So apart from searching for apps, like let's say files, we can also search for any bookmarked folder. So what do I mean by a bookmarked folder? So let's go to files and as you can see we have some folders that are bookmarked so if i open applications and if i type in downloads i can also open these folders directly let's type home so i can directly open up home inside of the file manager we also have a secondary click menu for expanded hardware integration and support for launching apps on dedicated graphics so laptops that have an intel igpu as well as an amd or an nvidia discrete graphics card they're going to benefit from this so now we're going to go ahead and open settings and see what it's like inside settings we're going to go through a few of these so first is the applications as you can see the default applications list is over here we can change the web browser we can change our email clients and also a few of the other things in this tab we can change which apps we are going to launch at startup you can add apps you can delete apps and under the permissions tab you have the applications and in this panel, what you see is a list of the permissions that they have been granted or taken away from them. So each of these have a different set of permissions that is enabled and a different set of permissions that is disabled out of the box. Moving on, we have the desktop. So inside desktop, first we have the wallpaper tab and might I say, this is one of the best collections of wallpapers that I have ever encountered in a distribution. Now this is a personal choice, so feel free to disagree in the comments. Now let's pick a wallpaper as is tradition and I'm going to go with this. And after the wallpaper we are going to go to appearance and as you can see we have the default light mode or the dark mode. Let's go to the dark mode, see how it looks. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Let's open up files and let's check out how it looks and I think it looks pretty amazing now we're going to go to the default mode because this is the video about defaults and I would like to stick to it as for the accent color you could pick anything you want you could also pick a automatic color based on your wallpaper as it very clearly states I'm going to go ahead and pick orange and let's see what effect it has so right off the bat you can see that this color changed so that's basically a little preview to show you how the accent color will affect your system. Moving on to text, we have text sizes. So we can increase the text size or we can decrease the text size. So we have another button for dyslexia friendly. This is really important, might I suggest. And bottom heavy shapes and increased character spacing can help improve legibility and reading speed. Moving on, we have the dock. So this dock, I think, is the Plank dock. Let's right-click. And right-clicking on any application, we see the Keep in dock. Let's see if we can open the dock preferences. And there it is. So this is the Plank dock. We are using the GTK Plus theme. It's at the bottom. Alignment is at center. And that is the icon size. But let's say I don't want to go into this. So from here, we can control the basic functionalities of the dock. We can change the icon size, but I am going to keep it in the middle. 
and we can hide the dock when any window overlaps the dock. So this is the default option and it will do this. And by the way, if it seems a little choppy, it's because I am running inside of a virtual machine. I know how you guys feel about it. Don't worry, I feel the same, but this is my personal rig. So yeah, it is what it is. We can also do a pressure reveal and we can also disable or enable panel translucency. Going into multitasking, we basically can enable hot corners. I personally am not a big fan, but if you are, you could basically have your cursor move over to any of the corners and there is a list of things that you could have it do. So now that we're out of this, let's look at touchpad. So we have a lot of functionalities over here under clicking, pointing, gestures. Basically, you can change your double click speed. You can turn on dual click, long press secondary click. Basically, you have a lot of options in these. You can change your gestures. You can also change what kind of pointer size you want if you want to reveal the pointer. But before we say goodbye to the settings, let's go to system and check it out. So this is built on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, as I mentioned, and it is running the 5.11 kernel, which is not the latest kernel, but then it is fairly recent and fairly stable. So if you rely heavily on this kernel, for example, let's say you have an AMD GPU or an Intel GPU in your gaming, having a recent kernel is better for you because you're also going to get the latest graphics drivers for this. Now under hardware, basically it gives you your computer configuration. So there you have your core count, your memory, your storage. Under firmware, if your computer needs some firmware updates and if this device is supported, you are going to get firmware updates. So pretty much that's all for settings. We're going to say goodbye and we're going to move on. Okay, so one of the most important things for elementary OS 6.1 you'll need is the App Center. So not only does it have a new look, it also now has 90 plus curated apps and they have shifted the curated apps from Debian to Flatpak so that they can include all the advantages that Flatpaks bring. So we're just going to go through it. So as you open up the App Center, you are greeted with this banner, which I think looks very sick. You have your recently updated apps and this is a mixture of free and paid apps. So this is your install button and it also shows your price that needs to be paid. And over here, they also made a few changes. So now this pop-up that comes, it's way more consistent. You can enter your email, your card number, and you can pay what you want because this is the model that the elementary OS team go to for their developers who plan on making apps for this operating system. If we click on any of those apps and go to their actual page, if it's a curated app, we are going to get this beautiful page that has screenshots of the app, which is very handy. It also has a little message and it also tells you what's new in the app, along with a few useful links to that app. Now, one of the things that they added is that when you're downloading an app, you need a progress bar. So the progress bar is now integrated into this, into this button. And also when you search for an app and you find nothing, then you will have an option to sideload apps from Flathub. So that is very important. But then I wish more apps were shown. I mean, I get the point why they're going for a curated experience because it's obviously going to be better. It's going to support the dark mode. And this is going to be integrated very well with the elementary OS ecosystem. But then you also have a vast amount of apps that are not going to be available in this method unless and until you add another remote repository like Flathub in the first place. So this is not something that a beginner could easily do. This is okay for expert users, but then this is not very good user experience. So yeah, there's that. Another highlight of Yolnir is that we have a different Alt plus tab. So let's open tasks and let's say I want to open photos. So if I have to switch between these, if I press Alt plus tab, as you can see, the task switcher is now kind of like Windows. And I'm not going to complain. This is way more usable. This is way more 
practical than their previous approach, which was a, which was very flashy and not to the liking of many people. You also have new animated dialogues. You have a new portal for file chooser with a new folder action. And you also have a new app chooser for flat packs when they open in different applications. And by the way, this dark mode is now supported across both GNOME and elementary OS apps. So if you have a GNOME app inside elementary OS, or if you have an elementary OS app inside a distribution that uses GNOME as its DE, they will respect your dark mode or light mode settings. So now that we're done with this, let's go to housekeeping. And this is one of the other things that they have introduced in this version. So this is basically an automated tool to maintain your storage spaces. So old files can be automatically deleted after 30 days to save space. And it also helps protect your privacy because you often forget where old things are. And you can also open trash from here. And if there is anything, you can also go ahead and delete it. So now that we're done with that, let's talk about some of the other things. Let's go to the terminal and let's check HTOP. So right now we are using 843 megabytes out of the six gigabytes that I assigned to this virtual machine. And from the look of it, it's very good. I mean, for a modern system, you would have a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM. And nowadays it's becoming eight to 16 to even 32. So this is not that big of a concern. Now, Elementary OS is also running on X11 instead of Wayland, but then if it serves your purpose, if it's practical, it's okay. We will move ahead to Wayland when the time comes. And now let's talk about the top panel. So in the middle, you have your date and time, and you also have your date and time settings. So this will basically open up your settings and you can change your clock to 24 hour formats. You can also change it based on location and other things. On the right, you have your power button. So it shows your user account. You can lock, log out. If you press the super key or the start button, you will find a list of shortcuts that open up. This, in my opinion, is an amazing thing. I don't have to explain why. Moving on to notifications, you have you can enable do not disturb. You can enable clear all notifications. You can go to your notification settings. And basically, because I am in do not disturb mode, it's not allowing me to change anything. But if I wasn't, then we can enable for each of these apps to have bubbles enabled, sounds, and notification center enabled or disabled. So that is a very granular control that the team is offering to you. And I respect that. Apart from that, you have your network settings. So this is wired because in a VM, this is what it is. And you also have your sound where if you have some music playing, this will show up. And you also have your sound settings. You can change your balance. You can change your output volume. You can also test speakers and enable screen reader. So these are very handy. You also have a button for input. As you can see, these are my input levels. And with that, we come to the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave a like. Please subscribe if you found my channel interesting. And I'll see you soon. Peace.